Phalanx fractures. Hand phalangeal fractures are common injuries. There are more in males. The small finger is more affected. The distal pharynx is more affected than the middle pharynx, and the middle pharynx is more affected than the proximal pharynx. Distal pharynx fractures can be associated with nail bit injuries. Seymour fracture is an interesting fracture. It is an epiphyseal injury of the distal pharynx. With a hyperflexion mechanism, you get a finger looks like a mallet finger with the apex dorsal. The terminal tendon attached to the proximal fragment and the flexor tendon attached to the distal fragment. It's basically an open fracture that needs antibiotics and debridement in the operating room and nail removal with nail bed repair and possible pinning of the fracture. Scissoring or rotation of the fingers are not uncommon. Symmetry of the flexed fingers should normally point to the tubercle of the scaphoid. In pharyngeal fractures, always look for rotation of the fingers. Malrotation can be seen after spiral, transverse, or intraarticular fractures. Spiral fractures produce more malrotation. Malunion can occur after spiral, transverse, or intraarticular fractures. The deformity and angulation of the fracture depends on location of the fracture relative to insertion of the tendons attached to the fragments. Muscle imbalance seen after transverse fractures. In proximal pharynx fracture, the apex is volar due to the fact that the proximal segment is pulled into flexion by the interossei, and the distal segment is pulled into extension by the central slip. In the middle pharynx fractures, the angulation of the fracture depends on location of the fracture in relationship to the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon. Fracture proximal to the superficialis insertion, the apex is dorsal because the superficialis tendon flexes the distal segment. In fracture distal to the superficialis insertion, the apex is volar. The fracture is extended because the superficialis flexes the proximal segment. In distal pharynx fracture, mallet finger, the distal pharynx is flexed due to loss of the power of the extensor tendon that keep the finger in extension. Here is a summary of the angulation of the pharynx fracture. Here is the proximal pharynx. Angulation is volar. And here is the middle pharynx with the fracture proximal to the superficialis insertion, and here in the middle pharynx with the fracture distal to the superficialis insertion, and here is a mallet finger in the distal pharynx. Deformities can occur from phalangeal fractures such as a mallet finger, boitinaire deformity, and the swan neck deformity. Treatment. If the fracture is extraarticular and the deformity is less than 10 degree angulation and less than two millimeter of shortening and no rotation, you can treat that patient conservatively with body taping or with a splint. Fractures of the middle and the proximal pharynx most often can be treated non-operatively. 
The fracture that's markedly displaced before reduction may not need internal fixation after adequate reduction. Proper position of the hand is important. If the fracture is displaced and intraarticular or have more than 10 degree of angulation or more than 2 mm of shortening or the fracture is mal rotated, then you need to do surgery. In general, surgery can be closed reduction and percutaneous pinning or open reduction internal fixation with screws or plates. Stable fracture are minimally displaced and no rotation. Most of distal pharynx fractures are stable. Unstable fracture are the fracture that's comminuted or a spiral with rotation of the fingers, severely displaced fractures, or supracondylar proximal pharynx fracture, or open fracture with extensive soft tissue injury or malrotation. The usual complication is loss of motion and the stiffness, and that can occur from prolonged immobilization or from surgery. Another important complication is malunion, which can be shortening angulation of malrotation. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.